Good morning, folks. It is Sunday, December 17th. It's another beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. Uh, just yesterday, I texted my friend Mexican Steve, and in half an hour, he got me on two live streams. So we are heading back up to Dallas today. It's about a three hour drive. I'm gonna stay there for three days. So today we've got a two, five, 10 stream. Uh, tomorrow we are gonna play just some two, five or five, 10 over at Las Colinas card house. And then Tuesday we have a big five, 10, 25 stream. Hopefully they go better. We are currently down about $8,000 in our last two sessions. Every time I bitch to you guys, it does fix the downswing. So that's my new strategy. Let's get it. Las Colinas. It's just about 4 p.m. So I'm gonna get some late lunch. I head straight down to the casino. The game starts in two and a half hours. I'm ready to go. I'm pumped up to play some 2 5 10. Let's go. Welcome to Peaks Dallas Live. We are playing 2-5 with a $10 straddle. It is 1,500 max, match the stack, and we have an action-packed lineup. Let's get straight to the first hand. I pick up a six of spades on the button, raise it up to $25, and only provide calls from the straddle. Uh, his name's Chance, so I'm just going to call him Chance from now on, but we go to a flop of Queen Jack 8 with two spades. Pretty nice, but when he checks it over, this is a board I'm not going to want to bet too often, so... Since I'm going pretty polarized here, I'm going to use quite a large sizing, and I size up to about $40. My opponent makes a call, we're off to the turn, and it's a huge brick. Deuce of hearts, so on these bricks you do want to keep betting, and usually pretty large. So I'm going to size up to about $110 here, and that gets the job done. In this next hand, I have forgotten to put on the straddle, but I raise the 8, 7 of spades up to $15, and then we get a 3-bet from chance, but it's only to 30 could four bet sometimes, but I think I'm just going to call and play some flops. So we had to a flop of king, eight, four, two clubs. We got the back door flush draw as well as the middle pair. So I'm going to check it over and chance checks back. So pretty nice. Feeling good about my hand, especially so when the turn comes down the king of diamonds. Going to start betting for value here. I throw in a pretty small bet of about 35, around half pot. And now chance raises me to 120. And I, I'm not believing this really to check back a king and then raise on the turn. So I'm going to call and pretty much call down almost any brick river. However, we get the ace of clubs for a river. That is gross. And I'm most likely going to fold here. A lot of his bluffs did just get there. You know, he's going crazy with a hand like ace five suited or clubs. You know, he just got there. So I check it over and lucky for me, he checks it back. So we're going to pick up our second pot of the day. Under the gun is raised up to $35. Player to my right is called, and I put in the squeeze with the king, queen of hearts up to $155. Folds around to the straddle, who tanks for a bit, and then folds, and then the original razor folds, and then the player to my right makes the call. So we're going heads up to this flop, which is not good. It is 7 3 deuce, 2 clubs. When he checks it to me, this is a board and welcome to want to bet too often, especially against someone who's called an open and then called again for a squeeze. So. He's got quite a few pocket pairs here, so I'm just going to check this one back, play some turns. We do get a good turn in the two of hearts, and once again, action just goes check, check. I don't think betting here makes a lot of sense. I'd rather use a hand like Queen Jack or 10 9, something with a little bit less showdown value. We're off to the river, it is another three, so pretty good run out. But unfortunately, we don't get to check this one down. My opponent fires out a pretty hefty bet of 250, about 66%. And I don't know, I kind of feel like heroing this one off. There's a lot of hands that, you know, are just going to take a stab on the river. But ultimately, I thought that if he had a hand like 4-5 or 6-5 or something like that, I think he would start bluffing on the turn. 
So I just think that he's got a little bit too much value here, and I do manage to find the fold. Picking up the ace jack offsuit middle position, I make it 25 to go. Player to my left now re raises me up to $80, and we get two cold callers as well. Folds back to me, and I just wasn't buying this three bet. I don't know why. Just something fell off. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the four bets, and I raise things up to $380. My opponent thinks about it for a bit, and then tosses in the call. And so does seat nine. Chance in there with the eight six off. Love to see it. We are heading to a flop of ace, king, queen, rainbow. It, super, super good board for me as the pre flop aggressor. I just have so many nutted hands here. And really, the only one we're worried about is jack 10. So I'm going to start with a very small bet here. I only fire out one six pot for 200. And now the three better decides to re raise me up to 550. And. Yeah, I just, I just don't think he has anything here. So on any bricks, we're just going to have to call down and play for stacks. But I don't want to raise and blow him off whatever he's got, because I think he's got like 5% equity or something at this point. But anyways, we toss in the call and we go to the turn, which is the 10 of clubs. So we turn the nuts and I expect him to keep barreling at a very high frequency on this card. Just because I don't think he had anything, and this is like the perfect scare card if I have a hand like Ace King, Ace Queen, or Top Set, something like that. So I check it over. My opponent checks behind. He goes to the river, it's a six of hearts, so I still have the nuts. Uh, the pot is about one SPR or so. So I thought it over. And something commentator said, they actually liked a 10% pot bet here. And I think I agree. I actually missed that. That would have been a really nice play there. Just 10% it. But I just assumed he had a whole lot of nothing. And maybe he can put me on nothing. I don't know. But I just shipped it all in. I didn't think there was any other decision there. And he's only got 10-7 of hearts. So that one's going to the muck. But pretty nice hand to pick up there. Picking up the 4-3 suited under the gun. I raised things up to $25. Middle position now throws in the 3-bet up to $85. We do get one cold caller. And when it comes back to me... I thought about putting in the 4-bet. His sizing was a little bit bigger than normal, so I just think he's got kind of hand that just kind of wants to take it down. Or maybe pocket jacks. It's also always pocket jacks, but we're pretty deep. I'm just going to call, play a little bit out of position, and we go to an unbelievable flop. 6-5-3 with two diamonds. We flop the open-ended straight flush draw with bottom pair. Uh, I check it over, and now Rusty fires up about a half pot bet of 130 here. This board is just so good for the 3-bet caller. I'm always going to be raising here, and I'm going to do it a lot with bluffs. So I raise things up right away to $400, and Rusty makes the call. We're off to the turn, and <laughs> it's the deuce of diamonds. We turn the straight flush. Unbelievable. I'm looking over to stack now. We're about 2 SPR, so I want to bet around 60% here. So I fired a bet of $600. Rusty's now in the tank, he's thinking it over, thinking it over, weighing his options. And then moves all in. We call, of course. He just mucks right away of, what can you do? And we are going to pick up a $5,000 pot at a 2 5 10 game. Beautiful. The straddle is off this hand, so I raise pocket nines up to $15, and we get two callers. So we're going three ways to a flop of 10, 5, deuce, 2 diamonds. Not great, one over card out there, so when it checks to me, I'm just going to check this one, especially out of position, and action checks around. And to the turn, it is the seven of spades. Now the small blind leads out for pot for $45. I'm starting to feel pretty good about my hand here. Uh, the 10 is going to be kind of irrelevant when he bets pot, so I think I've got the best hand here, so I toss in the call, and Eric gets out the way. We go to the river, it is the nine of clubs. I don't really think it changes my hand strength at all. Like, if we had the best hand, we still have it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but now he fires out a, another pretty large bet of 105. Look over his stack, he's about 1,500 behind. And I think just max pressure here. I think just ship it all in here and hope that we get a crying call from maybe some sort of like 7-5 suited or something. So I just go ahead and rip it all in, 1,500 to go. Unfortunately, my man over here only had the pocket sixes and makes a pretty easy fold. David has raised it up to $30. I look down at pocket fours and make the call. We also get two more callers. So we're going four ways to this flop of 953 rainbow. 
Now the big blind leads out for $55, about one third into this field. And when it folds to me, I just think he's got a very weak hand here. I don't think he's going to be doing this with anything strong. So I'm just going to start apply pressure right away. And I raise things up to 170. Folds back round and he does make the call. So we're heading to the turn. I feel bad about this one. It is the four of clubs. We are just turning river and sets today. Uh, he checks it over to me. And I think we're about three SPR here. So you want to bet around 80%. So I do go ahead and fire out a bet of $400. Kip now thinks about it for a bit. And he sort of like counts out his stack, which is kind of weird. I was not expecting that. And then ships it all in. And this feels kind of gross. Like, I, I got a little bit of flack for tanking here. Everyone just said he should just snap us off. But I just don't know what he's doing this with. I didn't think he had top pair anymore after he ships it all in, because why would top pair just shove there? Especially when my main bluff 6-7 or ace deuce just got there. So I just had a feeling that he has like pocket fives, pocket nines, six seven suited, ace deuce suited, something like that. You know, six seven is a double gutter on the flop, so he can definitely call a raise there. And it just didn't feel good, but at the end of the day, I have a set. Maybe we beat pocket threes. I don't know. I tossed in the call and he's drawing dead. So I do feel a little bit bad about that one for a sort of a nit roll. All right, there is a limp and the player to my right has now raised up to $50. I look down at pocket eights, could re-raise, could call. This time I decide to call. And now the player to my left puts in the squeeze up to $210. Folds back round to me and I am happy to play a pocket eight. So I toss in the call and we go to a flop of ace, six, deuce, rainbow. I check it over, he fires out a standard one third C but of 150, and I think we got to peel once here, so, you know, I don't even think folding is that out of the question, but I peel once, we're off to turn as a three of hearts. I check it over, and he fires out again for about $425, and I think letting this go is the definitely the correct play, but after this turn bet, he no longer has hands like kings through nines anymore, those hands just aren't betting. So a lot of his valued range has shriveled up, and he's just repping ace-king, ace-queen now. And I've seen him get out of line quite a few times tonight, so... I decide on this turn, on blank runouts, I am just going to call down. So, I toss in the call, we're off to the river, it is the ten of diamonds. No river set this time. I check it over, and he fires out another bet of 700. And I really should have paid attention to the sizing, because this really feels like value. And I just don't think he bluffs for this size. But on the turn, I just decided to call down. So I toss in the call and get shown the bad news in the form of Ace King. The hijack raises things up to $25. I look down at Queen Jack offsuit next to act. Very low frequency re raise, but sometimes does make it in there. So I re raise things up to $80. We get a cold caller from the big blind as well as the original raiser. So we're going three ways to this flop of Ace King, eight, two hearts, one diamond. Just a very, very, very good board for the uh, pre-flop aggressor. So when it checks to me, I'm going to start with a small bet here of $80. And both my opponents make the call now. The turn is the five of diamonds, bringing in an another flush draw. We do have the jack of diamonds, which could help. Uh, they both check it over once again. And I think checking back is the main play here, but I just don't think they're going to have too strong of a hand here. The cold caller is probably going to have a flush draw. And the original Razor is probably just going to be capped at like an ace, like ace 10 here. It's probably the strongest hand he's going to have. So I'm going to go for it this time. If we get a call from the big blind, I'm just going to check back and take my showdown value. But if the original Razor calls, I'm probably going to bet depending on the river. But we'll see. We'll get there. So I fire out another bet about two thirds this time for $350. This gets rid of the big blind, but the original Razor still makes the call. Heads up to the river. It is the Ace of Clubs. He checks it over to me. And I think at this point, my opponent does have an Ace or maybe a King here. But I don't think he's going to be too strong. Sometimes he will have Ace-King for a trap, but I think he raises that at some frequency during the hand. So I'm actually not too worried here. I look over his stack. He's got about 3,100 behind, so about 3 SPR here. And... I just want to apply max pressure to an ace. So, yeah, that's what I do. After thinking about it for some time, I ship it all in. $3,100 to go into a $1,200 pot. 
and my opponent immediately hates it. And he is in the tank for about four, maybe five minutes. And this is not a fun tank to be in for me. <laughs> but eventually he flips up the ace. It kind of looks like he's going to fold. And then tosses it in the muck. We get that one through. One of the biggest bluffs I have ever run. Under the gun has raised things up to $15. I make the call at pocket sevens. Now Rusty puts in the squeeze to 65 Folds back to me, I toss in the call, we go heads up to a flop of king, six, three, two hearts, one diamond. I check it over, and surprisingly my opponent checks it back. So we go to a turn, and it's another turn set, it's a seven. <laughs> uh, kind of gross, I'm going to check it over here and go for the check raise, because I don't think he's checking back flush draws, so. I check it over, unfortunately my opponent does check behind. River is the eight of spades, and I think it's pretty clear I've got the best hand here, and I've been firing out some pretty big over bets and bluffing a lot so i'm going to do the same thing here i fired out a 3x over bet of 450 dollars my opponent says i don't think i can fold this hand which sounds like good news until he makes a call and shows the 10 9 uh unfortunate but that is going to end our session on the live stream we're up four thousand seven hundred dollars and we played a couple hands after the stream which we'll get right into all right this is the first time we played off stream the straddle is live, player to my right has raised it up to $50, and I re-raise up to $125. For some reason, I thought that he had 3-bet someone, so this is my 4-bet sizing, but I just wasn't really paying too much attention trying to get my phone set up. Uh, now we do get a cold caller from the straddle, who flicks in the $125, as well as the original razor. So we go 3 ways to a flop, which is probably quite nice. Ace, 8, 5, 2 hearts. Checks to me, gonna start with a 1 third bet here of $125, and both my opponents make the call. Right into the turn, it is the three of hearts. Checks to me again, and it's a little bit thin, but I think we gotta go for it with ace king. Uh, around half pot sounds good, so I fired a bet of 475. The straddler is now in the tank, and this guy is definitely on the tighter side, probably the tightest at the table, and just hasn't been throwing out too many bluffs. So he moves all in, there's my right folds, and just watch this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm folding this. And he shows nice hand. the king <clears throat> jack off suit for the cold call three bet, float the flop, and shove for basically a min raise. And I folded ace king. Oh my god, that is sick. That is probably the best bluff that has ever been run on me. Um, not even upset about it though, and I still would fold every single time here, even though it's for so little. I just think we're drawing dead almost every time here. And I think this one's pretty important to highlight not to be results oriented and just know that I've, I've made a good fold, but this time he just went nuts. So that's poker. All right. This is the very last hand we are playing. I was getting crushed after the stream and my stack isn't about 7,000. It's quite a bit less than that, but this is the final hand. I got pocket Kings raised it up to $15 and good news when the big blind three bets all the way up to a hundred dollars. I don't think he's in a folding mood, so I just rip it in right away for 700. He calls, we're running it once. Flop is a 6 6 2 diamonds. My opponent has ace queen, and he turns us dead with the ace of clubs. River is the nine of spades, and that one is not going to go our way. We're in the game for $1,500, and we cash out for, I think, $3,500. So I think we booked a win of $2,000 for this session. But we did lose around 1100 playing 1 2 before the stream started, so about $900 a day. Alright, that is day one. It is 2 a.m. It is really late for me. Uh, played a little bit off stream and got crushed. I think I still won about $2,000 on stream. But I also lost about 1100 playing 1 2 while waiting for the stream to start. So, $900 a day, it's pretty good. I'm starting to get a little bit sick though, so I think I'm going to take it easy tomorrow, rest up, and then Tuesday, two days from now, 5, 10, 25 of peaks, and then probably play Wednesday as well. But I need some sleep now. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, folks, it is Tuesday, December 19th. We are back here at peaks for the 5 10 live stream. You know, I'm not gonna, even gonna get into it. Let's go buy our chips. We're in for 3,000. It's gonna be a 3K, match the stack, most likely 5, 10, 25. We are going to battle. Hey 
It is 5, 10, 25, and the knit game is on. Hijack is raised to 75. I decide to defend the big blind with 6, 5 off, and the straddler also makes the call. We're going three ways to his flop of king, 7, 3 with two hearts. Checks over to the original Razor who fires out for $80, and I'm going to use my gut shot as a bluff this time, and I raise things up to 360 Player to my left does make the call. Original Razor folds. Not what I was expecting, but we're off to turn. It is the King of Spades. So the player to my left is a wild, wild player. He is not only going to have top pair or sets here. He's going to have a very wide range. And I am going to fire off one more bluff. See what happens. So I fire out. We're looking about two SPR. So around 60%, a little bit bigger. So I fire out for 650 and once again, my opponent makes a call. We go to the river. It is the queen of hearts. And I think I just have to give up here. Uh, hearts got there. He's already got it. He's already got it. I don't think we're getting any folds anymore. So I check it over. My opponent moves all in. We fold. And good thing for us that the heart peeled off on the river or we probably would have lost our stack. The player to my right has raised it up to $75. I look down at king 10 offsuit and three bet the button to 250. Now the player to my left puts in the cold four to 600 and this guy is nuts. I love playing with him. Pulls back to me and for that price with the knit button on, I think we're going to toss in the call here. So going heads up to a flop of queen 10, six, two diamonds, one club. He fires out a continuation bet of $500 and this sizing kind of feels a little bit bluffy. It's Kind of large for a continuation bet. It's more than one third in a four bet pot. So I'm feeling pretty good about my hand right about now. So I toss in the call and we go to the turn. It is the eight of diamonds, improving me to the second nut flush draw. And now my opponent just open rips for 2000. So, oh, the pot size jam. And once he does this, I don't think he's got the nut flush anymore. I really think he would go small, small with a nut flush just because what is he scared of? So I just eliminate all nut flush possibilities from his range and then having the king of diamonds is really really nice because he can't have hands like king jack or king nine of diamonds. We're just blocking so many flushes so over here uh, we're getting a pretty good price like two to one here. So even if he has a hand like aces without a diamond we actually have odds to call here. Uh, if he has aces with a diamond we're just dead. Uh, Queens is no fun either but I think a lot of his hands here we are in pretty good shape against and he can definitely find some pretty ridiculous bluffs. So I do decide to toss in the call. We're running it once. River is the deuce of spades. No help and my opponent rolls over the 6-5 of diamonds. Ouch. That one hurts. We are going to rebuy and get right back into it. I think I bought in for another 3000 now. The small blind has raised up to $100, and I defend the straddle with pocket fives. We go to a flop of queen, nine, deuce, two hearts. Opponent checks it over, and I'm happy to check this one back. So we're off to the turn. It is the ten of clubs. Doesn't change a whole lot, but the board's getting quite uh, connected now. Opponent once again checks it over. I don't think there's any sense in betting here, so I just check it back. We go to the river. It is the six of clubs, and once again, my opponent checks it over. I think it's definitely time to go for some value here. Uh, I don't like betting anything less than three quarters, so I fired a bet of $150. Opponent thinks it over for a little bit and pays us off. We get that one. Nice. We're clawing our way back up to even. Hijack has raised things up to $75. We got a call from the cutoff and the button, and I looked down at ace four of diamonds in the big blind. Randomized here for a squeeze and landed on squeeze, so I raised things up to $400. The graphics are wrong here, only John makes the call, so we're going heads up to this flop of King 6, 5, 1 heart, 2 clubs. Really good flop for me, so I'm going to start with a small bet here of only $350, and it just gets the job done. So, picking up a nice pot there, and looks like we're only stuck around $3,400 now. We have a fresh round of the knit game, and Under the Gun has raised things up to $75. I look down at 5-3 suited in the straddle and defend, and we're going three ways to this flop of... Ace, four, deuce, two hearts. We flop the wheel. I check it over. The original Razor fires out a small bet of $100. We got a caller from the uh, button and definitely going to put in the raise here. I'm going to make it look big and bluffy and I raise things up to $500. This is my friend who got me on the stream, by the way. This is Mexican Steve. He decides 500 is not enough and rips it in. John gets out the way. We obviously call. We're running it once. 
turn is the nine of hearts river the queen of hearts oh <laughs> that one hurts we reload another 3k and now we're in this game for about nine thousand dollars so it folds around to me in the big line with 10 7 off i'm just gonna limp here and probably just limp call but we get a check back we head to the flop of 10 7 6 rainbow flop i'm usually gonna be wanting to check over so i check it over to him and he fires out a bet of 25 dollars this sizing we're definitely gonna put in the check raise and i make it 100 to go my opponent makes the call we're off the turn it is the ace of spades um just gonna want to go really big here maybe he's gonna think i'm tilted from the very last hand which was literally the last shuffle i got stacked with five three suited so i fired on a big all over bet of 500 dollars 2x pot opponent thinks about it for a bit but just lets it go unfortunately under the gun has limped and now the small blind has raised up to 125. we get a caller from the big blind i look down at king queen offsuit in the straddle and my math was off here. I meant to make this around 550, but I do go ahead and squeeze it up to $600. Pulls back around to the small blind who decides that is not enough and ships it all in for $2,700. Uh, nothing we can do there. I toss in the fold and I am very shocked to see that King 10 of spades. Really nice hand, my man. One of the gun plus one has raised things up to $75. I look down at Queen 10 of clubs in the small blind, not too many hands later. I decide to 3-bet things up to $300. Pulls back round, and after thinking for some time, he re-raises up to about $1,100, which is basically an all-in. And we just have to fold. We are getting crushed right now. We are down heaps, and we're just getting crushed pre-flop with all these all-ins. Doesn't feel like things are working out too much for us today. I think I'm now in the game for about $11,400. Over 10 figures. But... We're going to go back to battle. Pick up Ace Jack off soon. The cutoff, raise things up to $75. We had a call from the button as well as a straddle. We're going three ways to this flop of Ace, Queen, Seven, Two Hearts. Uh, checks to me, and normally I'd bet this, but with the boy behind me, he's very aggressive. I'm just going to check to him and let him go wild. So I do just that. I check it over. He fires out a bet of 150, and I make the call. Off to the turn, it is the Ace of Spades. Doesn't change a whole lot, so I check it over once again. But unfortunately, he's just got second pair plus flush draw, so there's no way he's going to keep barreling here. So when I check it, he does check behind. River is the deuce of spades, and I just want to give him some rope. See if he's going to bluff it again. I check it over once more, but he just takes, takes a showdown value, which makes sense, and checks it back. But we're going to pick up a small little pot there. Holds around to the big blind, who raises things up to $75. I look down at 8-6 off. Good enough for defense, so I toss in the call. We go to a flop. We flop another straight on 1097 rainbow. Opponent checks it over, and if I'm gonna bet this flop is usually gonna be on the larger side, so when he checks it, I fire a bet of 100, and my opponent snap folds. Uh, just can't get too much going here. We are down about $6,600, the most I have ever been down in a poker game, but let's see if we can turn things around. This next hand, the small blind has raised things up to $35. The straddle is off, and I defend with pocket threes in the big blind. Go to a flop of ace, five, deuce, all hearts. We don't have a heart, so if he bets, we're probably just going to fold it. Or maybe raise, who knows? I'm pretty crazy. Uh, Troy does check it over, and I'm just happy to check this one back. So we go to the turn, it's another deuce. And now Troy fires out a bet of $40. Uh, I've been playing with him for a bit, and I just don't think he's got enough value in his delay bets, so... I'm going to toss in the call here. We're off the river. It is the 10 of diamonds. He throws out another bet of 110. I just don't think he's got value here, so I just snap it off, and we do manage to pick that one off. So Troy has raised things up to $75. I looked down at 10, 8 of hearts on the button. Normally I 3-bet this, but I looked over at Troy's stack, and he's just a little bit too short. We're probably just going to get shoved on, so I just toss in the call. This also invites the small blind as well as the straddle. So three ways to a flop of queen, 7, 3 with two hearts. Nice. Uh, when it checks to me, I'm going to start with a small bet here of 100, and only the straddler makes a call. We head to the turn. It is the six of diamonds. Beautiful. We pick up an, uh, a gut shot to go along with our flush draw. Uh, straddle checks it over once again, and we're going to want to keep betting here. I don't think I want to go for an over bet here on this card, as it's not going to be that great for me. So just going to go for a pot size bet here of $500. And my opponent's in the tank. He's, he's thinking something's up. 
But after thinking about it for a while, he does just let it go, and we do get to get rid of our knit button. An early position raised to $75, and it folds around to me in the big blind with Ace King off suit. I throw on the three bit up to $300, and my opponent does make the call, so we're going heads up to a flop. Ace five deuce rainbow, pretty nice. Gonna start with a small bet here, it doesn't have to be too big. I fire at one third for 200. My opponent makes a pretty quick call. We're heading to the turn is the four of clubs. I don't think he's gonna have too many 3x in his range because he did call or open from early position. So I think this is a clear go for value again. We're looking just over four SPR. So I wanna bet a little bit over the size of the pot. I think I just went for a pot size bet of 1000. Opponent thinks it over and unfortunately didn't have ace queen and makes the fold. All right, we're gonna get into some street poker hands here. Pick up ace king off suit once again in the cutoff, raise things up to $75. The button now puts in the 3 bet to 225 on my left. And when it gets back to me, against a lot of people this deep, I would just flat here. But against this guy, we got to put in the 4 bet. So I re-raise things up to 675. And my opponent makes the call. Now, the reason why I would 4 bet this guy and not others is because I can just 4 bet call it off for 200 bigs. Against a lot of other people, I would not do that. <laughs> uh, we go to a flop of Queen Jack 5 Rainbow. Now with 4-bet pots, I usually go for a 10% bet uh, out of position on Queen Jack or Jack-10 high boards. So this is no difference. I fire out for 10%, 125 here. And now my opponent raises it up to $700. And I just don't believe this at all. Like he's saying he's got pocket jacks or pocket queens here. But I'm just not believing it. I think he's going to have hands like bottom pair. Like 5-4 suited or 10-9 suited for the open ender. King-10, king-queen, something like that. So I think a lot of his hands are just open ender or bottom pair here. And if I had a hand like aces, I could just call here and pretty much call down a lot of runouts. But with ace king, it's just a little bit too vulnerable. And I think a lot of those hands have like 50% equity against us. So I'm just going to move all in here, deny his equity, just turn it to zero and get the hand done with. Because I just don't think he can make the call with king 10. So that's what I do. I rip it in there for five thousand dollars and my guy over here at the seven deuce he's trying to get crazy with it but we're gonna pick that one off picking up the jack nine suit in early position i raised things up to sixty dollars player to my left now three bets up to 200 folds back to me and this deep i'm always gonna call so i toss it in we go to a flop of king king 10 rainbow we have the backdoor flush draw as well as gut shot so when my opponent bets small about one third here i'm gonna toss in the call and see what happens on the turn Turn is the three of clubs. We do pick up a flush draw. I check it over and my opponent checks behind. River is the beautiful ten of clubs. So we do make the flush, but there is two pairs on the board. So any king, any ten is a full house. I check it over once again. And I thought about leading here, but I think a lot of his range is going to be pocket pairs below tens that are now going to have to bluff. And he's been known to fire out some bluffs. So I think check call is the uh, play here. So I check it over. He fires out a bet of 275. Nothing to do here. We make the call and we are good. We are only down $3,400 now. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good to be in for 11300 or so and only be stuck 3.4k. The straddle is not live this hand. So this is just 510. Uh, early position has raised up to $35. I look down at King Deuce of Spades on the button. Pretty good, especially since we're like 5k deep. So I'm going to toss in the call here, play in position. This also invites in the small blind and the big blind. So we're going four ways to a flop of king, seven, four, two hearts, one spade. Surprisingly, now the small blind leads out for about $60, sort of close to one third. Now the big blind calls, and now the original razor calls, and it's back on me. And so I thought this over for a bit. I don't think he's going to have top pair here if he's leading. I just don't think he leads a set. I think he would check raise it. So I think his most likely holding here is going to be a hand like 5-6 or maybe some hearts like ace-5 of hearts, something like that. And then I think one person in the field has a flush draw and one person might have a king better than me. But once they get squeezed in between the leader and then me raising, I don't think they can continue with a hand like king-10 suited. So I think my hand is most of the time going to be good here. And if it's not, we can just reevaluate on the turn. So I'm going to go for a very thin value raise here. I raise it up to $325. Now the player to my left is in the tank. And now puts in the three bet up to $1,025. Folds back around to me. And I thought about this for a while. And 
I just don't think he has it here. When I re-raised the 6-5 on one of the first hands, he just cold called with a set instead of 3-bet with it. So I'm not really believing that he's got a, a set here. I think it's most likely holding is going to be around like a 6-5 kind of thing or some nut hard. So I'm going to toss in the call. We're going to play some fucking street poker. We head to the turn. It is the king of diamonds. Doesn't change much. I mean, I beat 7-4 now. And I do pick up a little bit more equity if he does have a value hand. And we can also make a full house, but it doesn't really change much. Our hand's still relatively the same strength, and we still lose to sets. Uh, he now fires out a one-third bet of 850. I really like the size. It makes sense if he's got a set. He doesn't have to deny equity anymore. But we are just going to continue. I'm going to call down and hope that we don't see a 3, an 8, or a heart on the river. Less of the deuce of hearts. I'll take that. So we toss in the call. We're off to the river. It is a six of spades. A beautiful card. And I am ready to call an all-in here. My opponent now checks it over. And I think for like half a second about going for some very thin value from a hand like 5-6. But I just think it's a little bit silly. And this is the one situation where I wouldn't go for thin value. Is if there's a lot of draws on the flop. You get check raise on the flop. Or in this sense, three bet on the flop. All the draws miss, and then they check to you on the river. They're usually either trapping or they just have a missed draw that doesn't call. So I'm just going to check this one back, and we are good. We are going to win that massive $4,000 pot with King Deuce. That is some street poker. Final hand of the stream, we have Ace, Three of Diamonds. There's a raise from early position to 75. I love that guy's name, by the way. GTO Lizard. Love it. Uh, I'm going to put in the 3-bet here. I raise things up to 250, and my opponent makes a call. We're heading to a flop of ace, three, four, two clubs. We got top and bottom pair here. He checks it over. Going to start with a small bet here of 175. My opponent does make the call. We go to the turn as the six of spades. There are now two flush draws. He checks over once again. I look at his stack. We're looking around four SPR, so going to want to bet a round pot here. I don't mind an over bet, but I just don't think it makes sense. So I fire out for 900. But he's only got the seven deuce. Uh, seven deuce game wasn't even on. <laughs> we ran into it twice today, but... That is going to conclude that session, and I think we booked a loss of only $1,500. Not bad. I think we cashed up for $9,900. I got to say, that feels really good to basically break even in this 5, 10, 25 game. All right, it is Wednesday, 11 a.m., December 20th. I am leaving Dallas now. I'm heading back to Austin. Played the live stream yesterday, the 5, 10, 25, and lost a little bit. I was actually in that game for $11,400. Not fun, <laughs> but managed to claw my way back up and only booked a loss of about $1,500, cash up for 99. So overall, I think I lost about $500 this trip, which isn't bad. But I'm heading to Austin now. I'm gonna get some sleep, do some laundry, and then tomorrow we are driving all the way over to Houston to go play in the Champions Club. We have a 5-5 game tomorrow and then a 10-25 on Friday. And then I gotta drive back to Austin, catch my flight home to play, or sorry, to catch my flight back home to Vancouver. If you guys wanna play with me in Vancouver, I'll be at Grand Villa on December 28th around 6 p.m. Gonna play some 2-5. Come on down, have some fun. Mostly drinking and messing about, but that is it for me, you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. One quick announcement before I sign off here. I did make a Twitter account, or X, whatever. It is Bluffalo Sam. I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, chuck us a follow. I will be posting where I'm going to be playing. It's any meetup games, stuff like that. Or just some insane hands. Uh, this episode was a lot of fun to make. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. If you could, throw down a like. This video took me about 25 hours to edit. It was a long one, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Thank you once again for all the support. And I'll see you guys shortly. Thank you.